the season. Right, are, you, are you cooking up the Jaguars? I am, and it's going to be delicious. <laughs> so what Smoke do you... Jaguars. Smoke Jaguars. Smoke Jaguars. You see, that's, that's Trevor Lawrence right here. That's right. Okay. That's Travis Etienne. That's right. And I'm Montez Sweat. So eat them up. Let's go. Woo! Come on, guys. Come on, get it. Ah! Pro Football Plus fans, guess what? For a long time, it's been coming. The Washington team is in first place. And when we talk about what's up, we're going to bring up the fact that Dallas is in last place. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, you know, when you have a good year, you bring in your big people. When you have a good game, you bring in the superstar. We had a guy back on our team, but he could do so much, we called him super. And the other thing is, he was one of the first co-hosts on this show. Welcome, Monty, the Superman Coleman, back to the show. <laughs> What's Thank happening, Monty? Thank you, man. Glad to be back. And now, as y'all know, the last few weeks, we haven't been right up on top of all of our information so what did we do we go and bring back our dictionary we bring back adam batach anything you want to know about the washington team he can tell us. adam what do you think about the win i was uh, impressed about some things i'll tell you tell you tony it was really a great start to a a, a, t a very important season in the ron rivera era all right well they said fall is coming it's getting cold in the room and we know every time g-man comes in he put a freeze on Man. all of it. g what's up not too much, guys. Now, Donna Hoffman, what you taking? Is G, you you got to straighten this out. Fans are asking me, are you the ratings or is the Donna the ratings? So, you got to tell me So I don't know, man. I'm just lost here. I'm not yeah. even going to let you that jump in, Gary, or tell me you talk anymore. A response. We already because know everybody question. know that I am the ratings and I am the informational queen. <laughs> and I tell the truth on this show. So I don't care what Gary says. But Donna, the fans are pretty excited, and this has been a, a good day for them Sunday when they can win, even though they were playing the JV team. Oh, that was Jacksonville. But at the same time, a win is a win. And Wentz, we're worried about him, but at the same time, it seemed as though he was 50-50. He did some good things and bad things. But what did you think about his overall game? Uh, Tony, you know what? He came out uh, slinging the ball. I mean, this team went up 14 to three at the half. And you got to like uh, some of the things that he did because he rallied this team at the end to bring this team back to get this win over Jacksonville. So, yes, he made some mistakes as far as the turnovers. But I think that you saw a leader in him and what this team is looking for in a quarterback. Now, this was one game, but you've got to walk away with liking what you've seen from this offense. This offense, Tony, has so many weapons for him to use. I mean, you've got Dotson, you've got McLaurin, you've got uh, Curtis Samuels, which we are so, so happy to have him back. That's Curtis Samuel. 
So, I mean, he did some great things, but I think kudos goes to uh, Carson Wentz, who had over 300 and some yards uh, passing the ball. So, you know, I've been hard on the quarterback and Carson Wentz, but again, it's one game, Tony, okay. and it's one win. So All right. Well, you know, people are saying, who is that guy in the middle? You never brought him in, so I'm bringing him in with a question. Alex, I can hear myself. Are, are, are you hearing me twice in, in the microphone right now? Uh, I was hearing a little bit of Donna feedback in somebody's mic, but that's what happens when it's live TV, Tom. I thought it would. That's what happened when you had the wrong information. Oh, because <laughs> nobody oh. else is doing that. <laughs> but you know what? What are you trying to say? <laughs> but well, it's interesting. I got to come to you on this one, G. As long as it took you guys to build that name for the posse, now people are starting to question: Do we have a new posse? Oh. What did I say the last show that y'all laughed at me about, Tony? What What did I say? You know, you got Donna, who we both know is an informational queen, right? Not, man, where did that come from, not, man? She had brought that up on us. Not right. I, I don't know where she came up with that. But I tell you what, I mean, what I liked about this win, quite honestly, is that they fought through adversity as they came back and won. In the past, that did not happen. You know, they go up, they get down. They make mistakes and they don't come back from it. They got they made mistakes and came back from it and went out and won the football game. So that's important to, to start off this season. And I think again, it's a nice start. You know, hey Alex, Andrew's history is a great start. Yeah, you know, they they won and oh, they, yeah. they're in first place. Alex, go. what do you think about the the offensive line? Did they play better on Sunday? Did they play the run better, or did they play the pass better? Or just as a better as a group. Uh, Tony, they didn't run the ball as well as I'm sure they would have liked to. Antonio Gibson was sort of dynamic and crafty, and he was sort of the running game. I know ultimately, and, and I don't need to tell you and Gary and Monty how football games are won in this region. It's by running the football or at least proving you can do it. I'm sure Ron Rivera would love to have put up more rushing yards. Uh, that said, they did enough. They did enough. Uh, pass protection was – I think it was fine. I, I, you know, I'm sure they have some things – they would like to clean up when it mattered. Carson Wentz got enough time to A, hit McLaurin, and then B, to hit Dotson. So, as Gary said, this was not pretty. I mean, this team this team is not one of those teams where we can worry about style points. If you're the Baltimore Ravens and you're used to winning 10, 12 football games a year, you can sort of be, you know what, we won the game, but not this team. <laughs> you win. They won the ball game. So, they got a ton to clean up. Gary's so right. They had to fight back to do this. They didn't hold on to do this. They lost it and came back and won it. The quarterback showed some moxie. He's not perfect. He's not going to be perfect. The head coach says he's going to need to take antacids all year long because this roller coaster we're all going to be on with Carson Wentz. You know what? They won a football game against maybe a JV team, to use your term, Tom. They're a National Football League team. They could have won that game. Jacksonville left some points off the board that first touchdown that turned into a field goal that's a touchdown 95 percent of the time it wasn't yesterday sometimes you got to have a little luck the washington commanders won a football game tone and the quarterback led them to it i mean it's been a long time since we could talk about that well wait a minute alex it seemed like you came right at me when you say the washington commanders <laughs> You didn't look at no one else. What's up with that, man? When, Gary. Money, when I came on, I was telling the people how super you was. You were for us because you could do so much, catch punches, do a, a punch and do everything, kickoff, linebacker. And one of the big positions back then that was being developed was the tight ends. Tell me, did I didn't see Washington's tight ends really contribute a lot. Did you see anything being a, a linebacker that played over tight ends? Do you think they need to be more involved in the game? Well, Tony, to be quite honest with you, I didn't even see the game. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, you didn't think they were going to win. <laughs> well, tell I, me, I, did, I, go from the generalization <laughs> when they put you over that tight end. What do they want to happen? What may have been happening on Sunday for, for them not to utilize the tight ends no more than they did? Well, I, and, and I can only speculate uh, with their tight ends because, like I said, I'm in Arkansas now, and if it's not a national game, then I don't get a chance to see the commanders. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't see the game yesterday. 
But uh, when I played, when we lined up over at tight end, the number one objective was to jam him, to make sure that he didn't get a free release, uh, to take him, his timing, the quarterback's timing and, and, and the uh, uh, tight end's timing out of the, the equation. And, um, you know, a lot of times we played man on the tight ends. Sometimes we played zone, but the number one objective was to jam him to throw off the timing with the quarterback. Now you fans, hey, I hey Tony, to I got to jump in right now because the tight ends were involved in that game. Logan Thomas, who has come back from a major knee injury, had four catches for 45 yards, and then they had Bates who filled in for. I can Logan catch Thomas. a ball 10 yards if I got four catches. I can get four. Hey, yards he had 45 yards. Tony. He, was, he was in. He was involved in the trenches of this game, and then you've got. Uh, Amani Rogers, who is the new uh, uh, tight end that has been transformed from a quarterback to a tight end. So having Logan Thomas back is is huge in there. We know that Carson Wentz liked to go to his tight end a lot. So I thought the tight ends were involved a lot. But before we go on, Tony, I want to go to the locker room and let you hear what Ron Rivera, as far as Carson Wentz and Jalen Dotson, the rookie wide receiver i'm sure gary crock loves him what they had to say about the game uh, i really do appreciate the way they stuck to it you know when, when things were going bad you know they stuck to it um really appreciate the way the coordinators took a look at it too as, as well and you know scott stuck to his game plan he, he didn't he didn't back off his exhibited by him you know by us throwing the ball when we had we were in field goal range um you know and that's a gutsy call but that's the call we had to make um, real appreciate the way Jack handled the defense. A couple things that you know we're, we're going to get corrected. Um, that's a big plus, and the special teams was, was solid. So there were some really good things in all three phases for us. Biggest thing we can't do is we can't turn the ball over. We had too many little mistakes. That 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 that, that you know uh, it, it's going to hurt you. It's going to cost you. You know and we may not be able to pull one out this way. So great, obviously. Like I said, coming off of a rough stretch, started fast, rough stretch there in the middle, but to to kind of rally together and get it done uh, when it mattered at the end. Um, that was cool. Cool way to start. I mean, it is hard to win in this league, and so it doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter any of those things in the last couple minutes of the game. If you find a way to get it done, um, that's what good teams do, and I'm glad we did that today. I could play. I mean, that was. I don't think it was a very good throw. I just said give give this kid a shot, and um, yeah, I mean, I've seen him do that in OTAs. You know, once at the end when he got there, I saw him do it all training camp. Uh, I'm just glad that the world gets to see what he can do now, too. Um, and so for me, just giving him a chance, the way he made that play, I think often goes goes overlooked how he how he did that slowed up, kind of laid hands, all of that. Uh, incredible play by the rookie. It was awesome. Yeah, uh, it was definitely pretty cool getting that first one under my belt on uh, the first game, uh, my debut. Um, Carson just giving me a chance. You know, we've been, we've been talking about it ever since I got here, ever since he got here. Just giving me a chance, you know, I can make plays for this team and, and that's what I was that's what I was able to do. It was actually we actually a counter off a play that we ran before that we threw a pick on on, on our sideline. Um, we knew the, the guy was he was sitting, he was squatting low. Um, and we knew that we put a double move on him, I'll be able to beat him over the top. You know, Carson just giving me a chance, you know. Um, trusting in his receivers. We knew that the receivers were gonna have to make plays coming in this game for us to win and that's what we did. It's not oh no, here we go again. It's okay, who's gonna make the play? You know, and 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 again, um, credit to, to Defoe and, and and the DBs, but credit you know to to the rest of the D. And and I will say this, you know, with some of the guys getting nicked on the D line, um, you know, that was huge uh, because those guys were gassed. I mean, they really were. They were they were, you know, when you're down to three tackles, that's that's tough. I told you guys earlier during during camp that we had a lot of talent in that room, uh, especially between us three. Um, you guys you guys kind of saw a glimpse of that today. Uh, and there's just so much more that we can do, you know. Uh, Coach Coach Drew was preaching all week that the wide receivers are going to be the the piece that gets this team going, that gets the offense going, and that was the case today. You know, uh, guys coming up big. Curtis starting the, starting the game off hot, making almost every defender on the Jags defense miss. Uh, Terry coming back after two interceptions. Terry coming back a bomb down the sideline, uh, getting us back started, and then just me ending the game. You know, a touchdown uh, to, to save the game. So. You know, we, we got a lot of things planned for the future. Um, a lot of guys who can make plays, and, and we're just excited to, to get this one under our belt. So, Tony, well, as you heard, uh, Carson Wentz say it may have not been pretty, but this team was able to pull this out. And having Dotson uh, with that wide receiver core with Terry McLaurin and Samuels, this team is solid on the offensive side of the ball. 
And Adam, I, I hate to throw you on real quick, but you got to give me your overall assessment of this offense real quick. We get about 45 seconds. That's Tell very me simple, Tony. Uh, it's very apparent to me there are some huge differences that I see. One, I remember comparing uh, Carson Wentz to Ben Roethlisberger when he was drafted. I still see some of those attributes. Among them is his ability to break through sacks that would be sacks. That's also, that's very telling. Another thing that's very telling is last year, Taylor Heineke had real trouble with deep ball throws. Uh, Carson Wentz doesn't have that problem. He has tremendous arm strength. That's why he ended up with throwing four touchdown passes last week. And I think that's going to bode well for this team moving forward the rest of the year. All right. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we talk about a defense that they said never gave up. That sound like us, Monty. Except when we gave up 38 points to Green Bay on Monday night. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> start talking about the part of the team and everybody expects to be one of the best in the league and on Sunday they started to show us some of that the never giving up getting to the quarterback stopping the run and things like that but at the same time when you got a defense you have three sections of that defense all of them all facets have to work together Monty you was one of our best defensive players we've ever had this defense if they start working together all the number one draft choices they got what do you see in the future for this defense this year? Can they carry this team? I know they were talking about the, the posse. Look at Gary. He got a little giddy when I say can they carry it because he, want, he wants the receivers to carry it. But can this defense be strong enough to take this team where they want to go? I, I think so, Tony. The, the, the thing about the defense is the defense is going to win games for you. And for them to gel together at, in this first game and uh, get interceptions when they absolutely need them, uh, get uh, turnovers when they absolutely need them to play solid um, on all phases. Uh, the three segments that you're saying uh, makes this a, a strong defense. And being just the first game, I thought they played well, even though I didn't see the game. Uh, just listening to you guys uh, uh, brag about them um, lets me know that they are gelling together. And one, one thing that we got to keep in mind, defense does win football games and they win championships. Yeah, now how did you know that? Is that those three championships that we put in the thing, uh, in the case? <laughs> hey, 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 Tony. <laughs> hey, Tony, Monty talked about getting turnovers at the right time. Derek Forrest is a safety that filled in for Cam Curl, who was out hurt. And he had a tremendous game. I mean, he was making plays from the beginning of the game, knocking down balls. Uh, just great defensive play. And then at the end of the game, he sealed this for the team with that big interception. And talking to him after the game, he said that, yeah, he was a little nervous coming into this game because he was filling in for uh, Cam Curl, who was the starter. But he said after he uh, shook off the jitters, he came back, settled down, and came back and played. And it's just a testimony of the depth that uh, Rivera has and Jack Dorio has with you know, with force having him to come in and play the way he did in that first game. And he was so key for this defense. Alex, overall, they said last week they were speaking of the linebackers was taking a step backwards. What did you see on Sunday? Tony, again, it wasn't pretty. Jacksonville moved the ball at will first drive of the game. And it took uh, some 
luck, frankly, for that to not be seven. That was three instead of seven. I thought the linebackers played okay. Um, again, if you look at stats, Jacksonville had a ton of yards. They ran the football. They, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a lot. So I know, uh, you know, if you're Del Rio, if you're the coach, uh, whether you're Jack Del Rio or the head coach, it's one thing when you lose a game, as you all know, that played this, the coach has a lot to chew on. <laughs> the best thing is win a game, have some mistakes, but fight through them so that the coach can still chew on you. <laughs> He's still going to tell you what you did wrong, and this is what we got to clean up. But that feels a hell of a lot better after a win than it does a loss. Linebackers played okay. Uh, there were a couple would-be sacks uh, that, that there was enough pressure would have been a sack turned into an intentional grounding or a holding call. So I think statistically they were probably better than it looks on paper. They were sort of bend, don't break. Again, Jacksonville up and down the field, getting three instead of seven, missing a field goal. Jacksonville could have won this ball game, Tony. And if they did, then we're talking about how poorly the defensive played. But when you sort of color it with rose-colored winning glasses, winning cures all, linebackers will get better. They looked fine yesterday. Well, you know, I'm always going to go to Adam Batachi when we start talking about overall team performance. Now, Adam, take a look at this defense this year as opposed to the last year and the year before. Do you see that improvement that we need to see to have a Super Bowl defense? One thing I did see on Sunday against the Jaguars that was a serious problem in week one of 2021 against the Chargers was third down defense. The Chargers converted third down after third down after third down, and it cost the Commanders in week one last year. Against the Jags in week one, they were Jacksonville was three of 12 on third down. So the third down defense was huge in coming away with a victory for Washington last week against Jacksonville. And that's always important. Superman, I tell you what, you, when you look back at our time when we played and everything and we're listening to this right now, all of it sounds very, very interesting that the thought process that we carried in the games with us. And when I look at this defense, when I look at the offense, I start looking at them as an overall team. So we have to say, you got those two doing well, but special teams, we need more play out of them. And that's one thing I came to you, Monty, because – you was our only linebacker that caught punts. Yeah, I caught him in practice, Tony. I don't know if I could have caught him in the game. Oh, you, you could have caught him, with, man. With, with live bullets coming at me. But but uh, uh, special teams is always important to us. Uh, with Wayne Severe, uh, he, he, you know, it was three phases of the game. We had offense, we had defense, and we had special teams. Special teams had to hold their own. In, in order for us to win a football game. And they did. They did. And um, it, it's the same. It, it, that, that's one ingredient that would always be the same when you're playing football is you got to play with all three. You got to make sure that you spend the time in practice with special teams just as much as you do with the offense and the defense. Well, we might as well start talking about next. And we say that the Washington team is in first place, but that means that two other teams won as well. One loss. I was very happy to see Dallas losing. But I'm also kind of terrified that everybody's talking about Philadelphia is such a great team. How do you think we match up with the Philadelphias and the Giants in our division? Anyone can bring that. Well, well Tony, uh, I think you better be talking about the Detroit Lions, who they play, and Philadelphia barely. Oh, I ain't the Detroit they, Lions. They, the Detroit Lions, years. they are elementary team. We ain't. Well, well let, let me just say this. Detroit put up 35 points on the Eagles, but the Eagle won 38 to 35. And next up for Washington is the Detroit Lions on the road. I mean, you look at the division across. The Giants came back and won that game. They look like it was lost. Philadelphia, I think, is the team that has improved in that NFC East. Uh, I mean, Jalen Hurst, that was the question marks for the Eagles, but he came back and he looked pretty strong overall. But this Washington team, as the players tell me, they better be worried about the Detroit Lions because that is an improved team this year. Hey, Gary Clark, can I ask you something? When Hell Tony no, no. Don't ask him, Alex. I'm hoping we don't – I hope when this doesn't air in Detroit. Okay, because Tony's talking about people being JV. <laughs> Gary Clark, if you were – if you heard another person call your football team the junior varsity, what would Gary Clark do? 
he gonna get mad at the coach. <laughs> Gary, you're on mute. We can't hear you, Gary. Sorry about that, guys. Anytime we you hear you. somebody, you hear somebody um talk bad about your team, you know, it's, you know, stuff that you put on your on your on your um chalkboard. So at the end of the day, I, I like trash talk. I always have. You know, I never started, but I, I like to participate in it once someone says it to me. So I'd, I'd be fired up at the end of the day. I mean, I really, I really would. But also, it allows you to also back up what you say. You know, like, like if I'm telling the defensive back what, what route I'm going to run, right? I just told him what route I'm going to run. It's up to me to make sure that I get open after I told the defensive back what I'm going to run. So I like that. I, I, I like swag either way around. If my father would allow me to talk trash as a young man to start it, I'm sure I'd be starting it as well. well it's easy we'll for Tony. Tony, Tony now, now. Tony, y'all know that Dexter Manley always talked trash and fired up the other team. So you all were Brent. always in trouble because you know Dexter. Yeah, Daryl Grant would be telling him to shut up. But the thing about it, I had two things. Yeah, I, I got – when I had had a good game, I got kind of nasty out there. But mess around that offensive tackle, start whooping me, I'd be asking, how's your family doing? <laughs> you look great today. Good. You're everybody? doing a good job on me today. But I tell you what, you do have to have a swag, and I think that's what we're joking a little bit, but you do have to have a swag, and, and that's what we're waiting to see for this team. Each and every person that's on this screen right now know that years ago, we never went into games saying, do we have a chance to win? We went in expecting to win. We went in expecting all this. Thing. Oh, that must be the president calling. Tell him I'll get back with him. But <laughs> we would go in there always knowing that we were going to win these games. And I think that's what's important. That's what we're looking to see from this Washington team. Hey, hey Tony, I will say you, this. going back to the Detroit game, the uh, Jared Goff is the quarterback behind the center for Detroit. He was 21 of 37 for 250 yards, two touchdowns. Swift was the wide receiver who had over 100 yards, 144 on 15. And they've got a good running game. Uh, that is Detroit. So when you look at the Detroit team and you look back at the defense and you've got, I can't believe, Tony, that you did not mention the defensive line against uh, the Jaguar, who probably played their best game in a long time. They bought the heat. It was a lot of pressure. And Tony McGee, Gary, did not mention the defense. Because line. I knew it would burn your mouth to have to mention it. And you <laughs> just did it. I, you, I, I baited you and pulled you right on in. Then we know the defensive line was the reason. I went all around. And you knew, I didn't even ask about the defensive backs. But one thing, I feel that it's important. And fans will joke a lot. But it's no one person on this team that's not important if they want to win a Super Bowl. And both of these guys have been in Super Bowl teams, and they know it always comes down to how you play as a team, not how you play as a person. And each of us have to know that. So when we come back, we'll go around the league a little more. I saw some intriguing things around the league. I saw some people that we thought was going to win. Brady must have been playing all off season because he looked the same. But at the same time, it's very interesting to these young quarterbacks and these young teams are really starting to take the league over. Let's go pay some bills. We got money coming. We got money coming on the show. I can't afford him, so you guys buy something. We'll be right back. <laughs> I think it's just the next step of generation of the team. I think the next step, uh, you know, to better success. I think Rivera is sending us in the right direction. I think with Wentz, he got a better chance because he got more. I love Heineke, but Wentz got more of an arm. Let's just say Carson Wentz comes out and gives us 16 consistent games. Where does this put this team with an easier schedule? With the new additions, I think I'm positive. I think we'll do well. I'm hoping the defense will step up the way we did two years ago. And we got more offensive weapons this year. I think we, we are the wild card of the NFC East and of the NFC. If this team can pull it together, Chase Young comes together at the end of the season, we could be watching a playoff game. Right? Yeah, my playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
when is the last time, a couple of years ago, that we saw Washington at the top of the NFC East? We see that right now. Let's enjoy it right now. But Adam, you said you got a little news about that, those dreaded Dallas Cowboys. I do, Tony. The, the latest is that Dak Prescott is going to have surgery and is going to be out six to eight weeks, which means they will not see him in week four when the commanders go to Dallas to play the Cowboys. That's big news, guys. I mean, he's had a couple of rough years, has he not? But and for him to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but that team has seen – they got hit with their offensive linemen. They've had defensive people get hurt. Dallas looked like this was going to be a down year, <laughs> and I'm laughing too. It looked like it's going to be a down year for them. Hey, Tony, when you look at Dallas, they came in this season already with a receiving core that was disarrayed. Uh, because they got rid of all their wide receivers and running back uh, wise, that's pretty much the only solid position they've got. And now, like you said, losing Dak, who was also coming in with an ankle injury, and now, as Adam said, could be gone for six to eight weeks. And then their backup quarterback is not a solid one. So Jerry Jones and that team is going to be searching for a quarterback this week. And like you said, this this team is in disarray right now for the Cowboys. Somebody give me some information why everybody feel Philadelphia is going to be so good for the rest of this year. That's Donna's squad, Donna. Not my not my squad, but I told Tony that they did a great job of, of getting a lot of key players in. And Jalen Hurts, as I stated before, is the, the uh, how goes this team on offense. They've got a good running game, wide receivers, and he just played solid. And you've got to like what they did on the defensive side of the ball and their offensive line. So when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, they're strong overall. To put up 38 points on the Detroit Lions uh, t- says a lot about their offensive side of the ball. Now, they gave up 35, so maybe I should be talking about maybe the defense isn't that strong. But I still think that Philadelphia is pretty much the team probably to watch in that NFC East too. And as, as we all know, the Washington Commanders made a little noise also. And then what about the Giants now? They ran the ball pretty well on Sunday, and they keep saying their defense is getting better, and they they bought in two edge rushers and two offensive tackles. Are they a dangerous team for us to look out for? Absolutely. That's a team that has uh, uh, Saquon Barkley looks healthy as could be. I was watching some of the game uh, this past week. Uh, Their coach, Brian Noble, he's he's a risk taker, and he, he took a chance by going for two. It paid off. They got the win against Tennessee. Hey, Adam, come on. The, the Giants, uh, t- t- Tony, I mean, he took a risk, and I uh, that was big. But Tennessee, at, in the end, missed the field goal that could have won that game. That but you got to kudos, kudos to the Giants because they fought back because they looked like that they were done at the You're beginning right. of the game. That, and that's my point, Donna, is that if you get a team that's been down like the Giants have been for as long as they have, you take a risk and you, it pays off. Sometimes that can catapult you to a great season. I got a question on that note for, for Gary or Monty. The Giants coach, as, as Adam mentions, they come down, they score a touchdown, they're down one final minute. Back in the day, everybody's kicking an extra point. They're going to overtime. This coach, first game on the road, said, uh-uh, we're not doing that. We're going for this damn thing. And they get it. What does that do for guys in the locker room when the coach says, ride with me, we're doing this thing, we're not playing for a tie, we're not playing for overtime, I'm here. We're here. We're going to win this thing right now. I know they missed the field goal, Tennessee did. But kicking a field goal down one and you need to make it to win it is different than kicking a field goal. And if you miss it, you keep going. That ain't that didn't happen. Gary, what does it do for a player, especially a guy with that thing that burns in your stomach when your coach says, we're doing this thing? Well, I think it, it shows the belief he has in his team. And the team always appreciate a coach believing in him. Uh, and I think he has that belief because the team that he has have shown in practice that they want the opportunity to always go for the win. So that big kudos to him. I mean, I'm sure the players appreciate it because the players always want to win. They always believe that they're going to make that ex- they're going to make that two point conversion. They always believe that. Uh, so sometimes the coaches keep us in check because we always want to go for it. You know, we always want to go for the win. So I'm I'm just glad he made that decision. Well, I'm sorry he made a decision because it hurts us. Because <laughs> I hope I lost. 
But as a, as, if I was a player on this team, I'd be great and proud that he made that decision. But you know, you digress and go back a couple of years ago and Ron made that decision and didn't work out well and people was ridiculing his status quo. But at the same time, I thought it was a team builder because they went on, even though they stumbled into it, they still went on and won a championship. And that's where you build it, where your coaches let you understand that they have the confidence in you. As Gary said, we want to go for the end of that. If we like Tombstone, let's end it now. But at the same time, you have to make those decisions and know the way you're going to build your team and let them know we're never out of a game. Hey, Tony, I got a question for you. So when you look at this NFC East, the quarterback position, okay, in Washington, you got Carson Wentz. The Giants, you got Daniel Jones. And then with the Eagles, you got Jalen Hurts. And with Dallas, we just don't know yet. But are you confident in Daniel Jones for the Giants that he can lead that team? Which quarterback in the NFC East do you think that can really move their team forward? Dak, Dak is the only one, but now that he's starting to have these injuries pile up on him each and every year, we'll start seeing residuals from those each and time he comes back. It's just like any player. By the time, they never lost a game, and that's what starts to happen. But he's really the best quarterback. Then you go to Hurts, he's pretty good. But he's limited. He can do a lot of things, but he's a gamer, and that's what's important. He'll run and do whatever it takes. And right now, he's the second best, and he may become the first best. Then you look at the last two, yes. The Giants, with whatever quarterback you have in there, they're only good when they can run the ball successfully. And their running back was hurt last year. Look at he come back on Sunday. What happens? They run it better. So the quarterback depends, and, and with the Giants, it depends on how their running game is. And with Washington, the court is still out. Monica, Don't get quiet on me now. Somebody Ooh, come back. Did you say can that? I ask, the court can I ask is Monica still out? something? Monty, last night yes. Tom Brady won. His coach, you played with his coach, so did Gary. Yes. Uh, Todd Bowles. Tom Brady's 45 years old. Monty, I was a fan back in the day. I don't want to date anybody here, but – when you and Gary were playing and Tony was playing, I was I was younger then. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Monty, it was a big deal that you played as long as you played. How old were you when you retired? I don't remember. <laughs> I was old. I know that. <laughs> I, I did finish 16 seasons, and, and I really don't know how old I was. But, um, you know, for Brady to be in his 23rd, 24th it's year, it's just insane that he's conditioned himself mentally and physically because mine was more mentally. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when I, I, I think I could have possibly played two more years, but from a mental standpoint, I, I was done. Uh, my, my routine was once the season was over in February, I was working out when my last, after my last season, um, I couldn't, I, I couldn't even get, get myself to get motivated to go and work out. So, uh, what Tom Brady is doing is is, is remarkable. It, it's 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 un, un, I really don't know how he's doing it, but uh, he played very well. I did see that game, and I thought he played well. He missed some passes. Uh, he threw one interception, but overall, uh, the, the the man is playing lights out. And you mentioned Todd Bowles. I did play with Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles was astute uh, as a safety. Uh, he was our leader on defense. And uh, it doesn't surprise me that he's been successful as a head coach uh, his second time around uh, after just winning one game. Uh, but Todd, he, he demands uh, respect. Yeah, and well, you know, when he played. And, um, you know, like I said, he was very astute. He was one of the smartest guys that we had on defense. And um, uh, I, I could only wish him the best this whole season. And I tell you, he got the tools to go with it. They just had to kind of pull it together. I think it was excellent that he got the opportunity. He's been put in other opportunities, like with the Jets and other teams. Tell you how it was. I was one of the first guys to time him when he came out. He, he was a fourth-round draft choice that he came out. And they right then they were talking about how smart of a player he was, even at that time. I think you're going to see a marked difference. And one thing that I did see on Sunday, he still got his fingerprints on that defense. That's very important. But when you look around it, you got to look all around the whole league, and there's a lot of teams that are doing that now. So it may be harder for Todd this time around, but I look for him to take Tampa Bay back to the Super Bowl. 
Now, when well, we come back, we'll talk about teams that do not want them to go to the Super Bowl. We'll talk about teams that really look like they're good, but right now is only one game in. And when you talk about that, you may think Donna Hawkins can make a layup. She can't. We'll be back in a moment. show you a, a, a nice exercise that when you're doing it right it hurts uh, it's called my hanging abscess your lower quarter works your lower ab abdomen so let's get started get in here like this put your hands right here and just don't worry about hanging you could just let your ha feet hang down low and bring your knees up at 90 degrees and you just bring it up just like here Try to do it when you don't rock. You don't want to be going up like this. You want to be controlled, bring it up, and back down to 90 degrees. Back up and down. It's an excellent exercise for your lower abs. That when you're doing your hanging abs and you're at 90 degrees, and if you want to get creative and if you got stronger abs, you can bring them out and just bring them up here and back down. But control it because you don't want to rock. You don't want to be doing this. You want to control it, bring it up, then down slow. Up, and you might start off with one, maybe two, but that one or two becomes three and four. All right, but you got to work at it. What I used to do, come down here. I would put these ankle weights on my ankles to uh, allow me to do this with chaos, and that allows me to do it easier. So when I'm putting these ankle weights on, and I do the same thing, it's going to be tougher. But after a while, I'm going to be able to bring my feet up as high as I want to. So my abs are already strong. But before, you want to start off like with two pounds, three pounds, and try doing them like that. Then when you take them off, after a while, you can hold your legs up here. Steady, then take them back down. Up, with your abs are so strong. Now, and if you all notice that I didn't get in on that with Ricky Irvin's because when he started putting on the weights to do that exercise, I was like, I'm good, Ricky. But Ricky said that it's not all also about just doing these workouts, but your nutritional plan has to be key also. And Tony, he told me to call you out because he said that you've been missing in action. And if y'all want that six pack, go to Ricky. I got a keg. What do I need a six pack for? <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing about it, I would tell you what, I couldn't do that when I was young. <laughs> what the heck? What do y'all say? Yeah. Money. Now, you was a workout freak. You and, and Gary and Sarah, what you? Oh, man. Gary wasn't you, no you, workout. You said, you said the man. The magic words, Tony, I was. Right. <laughs> you know what? I was talking all that game till I saw this piece, man. I'm going to leave Ricky alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm I can impressed. say certainty, though. Superman, though. Oh, money. Everything was cut up. I mean, he hasn't uh, been Superman for a reason. Like, everything. I had never seen a linebacker like that. Him, LT, Ken Harvey, those three guys, uh -huh. unbelievably fit. It's just wow. And Donna, well, Gary, I Gary did you everything. work out? Did you work out? Donna, they changed, they changed the treadmill test because of me. You do realize that, right? They changed the treadmill test because of me. Because when I first got there, you ran until you had to get off the treadmill. There was not a 12-minute run. Right. By the time I left, I mean, not before I left the next year, they changed that because I ran and I ran and I ran. I never got off the mill because I could run forever. That's right. It changed it to a 12-minute run. 12-minute run. 
They changed mine into a two minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd have a medic there when I got off. <laughs> oh, boy. Right, that, that was, that was the impressive thing about Gary Clark. Uh, he, he could run and he did run. And uh, we, we wouldn't have won the football games that we won uh, if it wasn't for Gary. And, uh, and I mean that. Yeah, it, it was it was it, it was great to watch him play because he played with the intensity that of a linebacker uh in a in a wide receiver body and um he, he came he brought it every week with a pull hamstring it didn't matter um uh, and I, I appreciate gary i do likewise and you know when i think about gary and think about what you just said about him about athletes and there's a few athletes around the league that these are people you can depend on to make plays each and every week. They got their air conditioning and stuff. And one of them is in Baltimore right now, Adam, and he's having he, – he wants more money than they're giving him, and you know who I'm referring to. He may be the best quarterback in the league. He's one of them, just as Monty just said, he's spectacular, but they don't want to pay him. He wants his money, and they do not want to pay him. Do you think that will affect him during the course of the year? Would this I hurt the whole goes. Baltimore team? I do think it'll affect him, Tony. I think, you know, and you, Gary, and Monty can speak to this more than I can, but the reality is players are human just like everybody else. You know, what we see them do it on TV is their job. But at the end of the day, they want to be compensated for what they bring to the table, and Lamar Jackson is no different. But I will say this. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl before he got paid. That should be Lamar Jackson's focus. Get the Baltimore Ravens to the Super Bowl and win. Then you'll get your money guaranteed. No questions asked. Just like Russell Wilson did in Seattle. Well, yeah, well Tony, let me jump in here right quick because Lamar Jackson, they offer him quite a few, a bit of money, but he wanted the, the Sean Watson guarantee, the full contract guarantee. And I think that they were going to guarantee over like a hundred uh, a million of that contract. I think it was 200 and some million dollars they were offering him, but he uh, said that he wanted the total thing to be guaranteed. And and that's the reason why he's not signed yet. So they were trying to give him money and he was gonna get $50 million uh, per season, but he wants that Deshaun Watson guarantee money. And I, and I disagree with Adam, you don't have to win Super Bowls because as you said, Tony, He's been that team. He's helped that team to move forward. So, yes, he should get paid. Is he holding out for a bigger paycheck? Is is it is it unreasonable? Only he knows. Well, you know, you had to be cognizant of the fact that each and every time he step on the field, his play dictate that he may be hurt. So I understand exactly what he's saying. He may get a hundred hundred million dollar contract and get hurt on the first uh, the first play and only get that year. He said his play is going to be the same. And if you want to remember back, look at IG3. Great first year, get hurt against Baltimore. Second year, never the same. So I, I tell you what, if he can get it all guaranteed, I think it's only fair because you know why? For you fans out there, and you can ask these two brothers is on the stage too, all those contracts are one-sided. They, the team can cut you when they want, but you can't leave until they tell you to. They pay you what they want to, and they guarantee what they want you to have. So I tell you what, I don't mind him doing that. And Adam, would you be in the dictionary? This first time I have to disagree, but I'm on Donna's side with this. And now you know that's bad. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. What do you mean, Tony? I mean, just because it's, it's hard, you know, like it's, it's hard to win Super Bowls. You know, the majority of teams, they just, you don't win them. You just, you just don't. And, um, but also, it'd be hard for me personally to turn down a hundred million guarantee. That's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Is that it would be hard for me to turn that down personally? You know, right. Because, I mean, I, mean I, I I get that guys want to be compensated, but one of the concerns I also have is if you have a guy going there worrying about his contract and the guaranteed money, can that create chaos in a locker room? Can that lose focus from? Let's focus on winning. Like when when Don, um, when Gary, Tony, and Monty played, you guys worried about winning before you got paid, did you not? Hey Adam, everybody in that locker room want to get paid, so they are not mad at him about uh, about. Uh, we, we, never to hold, get paid. we never hold it against the player though. Like okay. even though, uh, no matter what player gets paid, what like like perfect example when when Wilbur first came to the team, 
Monty could have been a little upset because, I mean, he was, Wilbur was the first free agent. You know, he was the first $6 million man. That's like okay. nothing now, right? But back then, until me today, it's still a lot of money, right? Right. But, but we don't ever get mad at the player. We can look at we can look at the system, and you know, we can look at the staff, we can look at the coaching, and you know, we can look at management and be like, "Well, wait a minute." But we're never going to take it out. We always want the players to get what they feel like they deserve. We never hold it against okay. the players, so the players never going to be upset that he's holding out or not holding out. Okay. Hey, we'll, hey, don't get him upset if he doesn't play well. Then we'll get upset. Okay, that's what I'm getting. Okay, if you don't play well, if you don't do your job. Then we get upset because once we strap it on, it's all about winning. Once we strap on the hammer, it's about winning. Right. And then business comes after the game is over. But right. it's always part of it still, though. Don't get me wrong. Oh, it's yeah. Business. But it is business. I, I find it hard to believe that any player will not go out there and do his best no matter what, no matter what the situation is, because we are very prideful in me beating the guy across from me. Right. At the end of the day, I won't bragging rights over the guy across from me. Right. right. All right. right. We're going to have to take a little break. And I think, Gary, you could not have said it better. And for everybody out there, you have to realize a million dollars or two million dollars was our whole payroll for all the players on the team in, in, in Chicago. So <laughs> you knew I wouldn't be turning down. I wouldn't be turning down 10,000. You know, And I tell you how that works. When I got drafted by them, I mess around and. Uh, they gave me seven thousand, seventeen thousand dollars bonus, and I bought a ten thousand dollar car. Couldn't even pay for gas. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. Now we want you to take a look at the screen. For the last two years, we've been having these picks. Donna and I have come in first place. A couple of people that did not come in first place haven't paid their money yet. So you keep an eye on this. Donna seemed like we getting cheated with this, are we not? Hey, Tony, we do because Gary is not saying a mumbly word because he came in last last year. And I think he's been having some hiccups. But, Tony, the quick thing, uh, this week's picks, uh, you've got the Dolphins at Baltimore. You've got the uh, Bengals at the Cowboys, the Cardinals at the Raiders. You've got the Texans at the Broncos and the Colts at the Jaguars. So it's going to be interesting in a new year. Gary, you're not saying a word. That's all right. We're going to show I'm it. I'm tired of winning all the time. I have to let you guys win every now and then. Ever. You just so, like Tampa Bay. You tired of winning, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's like Brady. Brady can't win every year. Y'all, you know, Any games know. particularly this week you guys think of big games for the league? Anything going on? Yeah, I think, the Colts, I think the Colts and the Jaguars game is going to be big. And the Cardinals, you got the Crabwet baby quarterback up there. But the Raiders are a team that everybody is talking about this year, although they had the hiccup in the first game. So I think it's just a young season, Tony. It was some great play last week from a lot of teams. I will say, Tony, that game with Russell Wilson, his first game at Denver, uh, ought to be something. I would never pick against him. Uh, not not that guy's too darn good. We've seen it, but a game I'm looking forward to, in addition to the Commanders at Detroit, obviously, is that Russell Wilson home opener against the Texans uh, should be pretty sweet. And I'm looking, I'm always going to keep my eye on Tampa Bay because G told me many Many years ago, never bet against yep. Brady. <laughs> That's right. And, and Tony, next week up, uh, your guest is the one and only Brian Mitchell and Santana Moss. Oh, man, we bringing in some hot ones. Santana and B. Mitch. All right. Well, you know what, guys? Been fun this week, and we hopefully when we come back next week, we can say, well, we had enough money to pay Monty Coleman, so we're bringing him back in two weeks. So right now, Monty, Thank you for you and the ditch in there, Adam. We'll be having you on many, many more times. But one thing we do, we want you fans to be on with us. So we never say goodbye. We say in the minute.